All right, thank you very much. Uh, coming up next, we have Assessing Election Infrastructure with Jason Hill, Genevieve uh, Marquardt, please correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, and uh, Derek Thornton. And I'm going to read their bios real quick while they get up here. So Jason Hill is the Chief of the National Cybersecurity Assessment and Technical Services, NCATS, branch of the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Agency, CISA. In this capacity, Jason has primary responsibility to deliver quality security testing and analysis to customers that include federal uh, government, state, local, tribal, and territorial governments, as well as private sector critical infrastructure stakeholders. Mr. Hill has worked with several tech companies, creating and teaching red team coursework and conducting penetration testing in the commercial industry and DOD. Jason also spent 22 years as U.S. Army National Guardsman for the Commonwealth of Virginia, as Master Sergeant of the 91st Cyber Brigade, he led the cyber opposition forces which provide red team and pen testing capabilities. He's achieved certification for the Offensive Security Certified Professional and the Secu Certified Ethical Hacker Training. Next is Genevieve Mar uh, Marquardt, serves as a member of the National Cybersecurity Assessments and Technical Service NCAT Cyber Hygiene Team, which is responsible for continuously assessing the health of external stakeholders' endpoints reachable via the internet and maintaining an updated enterprise view of the cybersecurity uh, posture of their systems to drive uh, proactive mitigation of vulnerabilities and reduce risk. Genevieve provides technical support pertaining to public IP scans and testing of DACA of public facing networks for stakeholders. And finally, uh, Derek Thornton, Federal Lead National Cybersecurity Assessment and Technical Services, um, NCATS team in June 2017. As Information Security Specialist, uh, De uh, da -da -da, sorry, uh, Derek serves as a Federal Lead, uh, uh, Federal Lead Leading NCATS RVA team conducting two week uh, penetration testing as 11 year veteran of the U.S. Air Force. Derek was stationed at Robbins Air Force Base, Georgia, and at White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico, while also serving two tier, uh, tours in the Middle East. The four years of military service at the White Sands Missile Range was an assignment to the National Reconnaissance Office, which led to 21 years uh, career with the NRO. Derek has a Bachelor of Science in Technical Management from DeVry University. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, if I would have known they were going to read all those out, I would have sent way shorter uh, bios. So um, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, my name is Jason Hill, as she said. Uh, I'm the chief of the NCATS team for CISA, uh, formerly DHS. Uh, we conduct uh, uh, cybersecurity assessments, what we call left of boom. Uh, before the adversary gets in, we try to find all of the uh, vulnerabilities we can um, in any of the customers that we go against. I want to give you a little bit of a background about the uh, services that we provide. Um, and I'm going to start off by telling you they're free. Uh, and we give them to the federal government. Uh, state, local, tribal, territorial, and uh, uh, critical infrastructure and private sector groups. So basically, uh, if you're in the United States or you're, or you're a, a U.S.-owned company, uh, we, can, we can offer our services to you. Um, if you go to uh, the U.S. CERT's website, you can find us there. If you email NCATS underscore info, you can ask, I'm sorry, NCATS underscore info at hq.dhs.gov, you can request uh, services there. or our service catalog for what we offer. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, about uh, elections and what we're doing for elections. Right now elections is one of our top priorities as I'm sure everyone um, who's talked uh, from CISA has told you already. Uh, and we're here to, to help secure the nation's election infrastructure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the services that we have. I'm going to pass it over to my uh, teammates here and let them kind of talk about some of the numbers we're doing. And then we'll entertain any questions that you guys have. Uh, uh, about what it is that we actually do. So uh, we actually offer nine different services. I'm going to briefly talk about them. Uh, the first one that we offer uh, that Genevieve kind of participates in is called our Sci-Hi program, our cyber hygiene. It is a, a, an external scan of a customer's uh, uh, perimeter. So they give us a list of IPs. We scan them looking for vulnerabilities and assets that are online. Um, I'll let her talk a little bit about uh, how we do that with the elections and, and the type of customers that we have when I'm finished talking about all the services. So um, another service that we offer is a phishing can campaign uh, assessment. It's a, it's a six-week engagement where we, we send uh, six different emails to a customer uh, ranging from uh, the Nigerian print scam to uh, a targeted spear phishing campaign um, where I usually click on all of them when they do it to me. So. Um, it's pretty effective. 
another service that we have is our, our RVA, a risk and vulnerability assessment. It's our two week penetra uh, penetration test. Uh, we have a remote penetration test where all we do is, is remote uh, assessment work to include web app scanning, uh, external penetration testing, and uh, uh, phishing campaign assessment where we work with the vendor to see which, uh, which um, uh, attachments, sorry, got stuck there, attachments uh, will make it through to the endpoint user and, and will actually activate. Uh, we kind of steal that data and give it to our red team folks. Um, and let them know which customers are affected by which um, attachments or which malware that we send to them. Uh, and then finally we have something called a CPE or a critical product evaluation where we take in uh, equipment. We are partnered with some of the national lab folks out in Idaho and uh, Pacific Northwest National Labs uh, where we uh, will send equipment out there and let some really smart people tear it down to, uh, to the software, firmware, and, and sometimes the hardware level to look for uh, vulnerabilities. I'm going to give a little background on your cyber hygiene and some of the numbers that you're doing. Yep, so as Jason mentioned, um, our cyber hygiene program is pretty much, we're doing everything externally. Um, we're just kind of sitting there testing to see if your windows are open, we're not going inside kind of a deal. Um, so for our cyber hygiene vulnerability scanning, that service, our cyber hygiene vulnerability scanning service is um, offered to all customers as well as our phishing campaign assessments and our room penetration testing assessments. Those are all encompassed within our cyber hygiene program. Um, so for the vulnerability scanning, essentially what we do is we use Nmap to do network mapping and then any hosts that we find will run Nessus scans against. We'll provide those to you on a weekly basis, the reports, um, but the scanning is done continuously so, and it's all automated. Um, for the phishing campaign assessments, it's, it is a six week campaign. We do varying levels. Um, and that's to test your user behavior. Um, the, that's really where the focus is. What kind of indicators are you susceptible to um, and how you can kind of bolster your security awareness programs kind of against the findings that we, come, we get out of that service. The remote penetration testing, like Jason said, we do web application scanning, we do OS, in, OS intelligence, open source intelligence, um, we do Nessus scans as well, um, and then the phishing there is testing what, what payloads are available. So with that program we kind of say, yeah, usually at least one user is going to click. So instead of testing user behavior, which we do in our phishing campaign assessments, for the remote penetration testing, we're instead focusing on what payloads are actually able to work. So um, for cyber hygiene, we currently have about 1,300 customers total, and of those 200 or so are elections, but we are seeing many more starting to sign up, especially recently with the 2020 elections coming up and such. Um, there have been counties that have actually created directives for their board of elections to start signing up for our cyber hygiene vulnerability scanning services as well as some of our other services. Um, phishing cam campaign assessments, we've done five this year and there's still three more in progress. And then for remote penetration testing, we've completed 25 and we've got 20 in progress currently for those. So Genevieve kind of mentioned uh, we've got a couple of states that have reached out to us and asked uh, for our help. Um, a couple of, uh, one of the states has actually directed its 80 some odd counties to come get our services. The issue with that is, is that we have limited resources to do this. Uh, we've got a team of about 64 uh, federal employees. Uh, we also employ a couple of contract companies um, that help us force multiply. Uh, but currently, we can't do uh, uh, that entire state's 80-some-odd uh, uh, counties with all of the services that we do. So what we've done is we've offered to those counties and to those states that are asking for our services, we're offering them um, the cyber hygiene program. Right now, we have roughly 1,300 customers in our cyber hygiene program, and we can scale that up to about 6,000. So roughly, there are 3,007 counties in the, in the United States. Uh, so if all of them wanted to sign up, they could. Uh, one thing that we didn't mention is that all of our services are voluntary, so we can't make anyone sign up for this, um, with the exception of the federal government. Uh, they, they have to sign up for, for cyber hygiene. Uh, and so, so getting kind of back to, the, back to the, uh, the states, so what we're looking to do is we have another group within um, CISA called Methodology. Uh, it's a branch that is designed to bring in um, 
uh, entities from the outside. So, for instance, if a state's National Guard unit is a cyber unit, um, they can come to our facility and kind of learn our methodology and then go back to their states with that methodology so that the states can reach out to their own folks to help secure their election infrastructure. Um, so what I want to do next is kind of turn it over to uh, Derek Thornton. He's a, he's a Fed lead with our RVA program, our Risk and Vulnerability Assessment Program. Kind of let him talk about that program and, and the numbers that we're doing. And, and then, and then uh, we'll talk about what we're actually seeing out there in regards to elections. Thank you. Um, so I am part of the Risk and Vulnerability Assessment Program and we do assessments um, on different entities, not just elections, but we do infrastructure, we do, uh, we do private companies, so, sorry. We do private companies, uh, we also do infrastructure, um, we do, um, man, I'm forgetting this here. Anyway, we, we have, uh, I'm kind of thinking off the top here. So it's a two week assessment, what we do. Uh, first week is external. We do that um, from our labs. And what we do is fire off everything we can external. We try to go for your web applications. We try to go for your open, open services, open ports that we may see. And we also launch a uh, phishing campaign. So we'll do a pen test that includes phishing. It's not to the degree of uh, the six week program that they have. Ours is two weeks, so we're pretty loud. Um, the reason why that is is with two weeks, we cannot be as quiet as, say, a red team. So we are not a red team. Um, red team is a different part of our group. But um, so we do ex two weeks. It's external. We do the from the, pen, the external pen test. We do um, also internal. That's on site at the customer location. We'll get in there and try to see if we can plug into the wall. If, a, if for instance, a janitor, could a janitor plug into the wall, see how far they got? he can get. Uh, we also test uh, if a user with uh, regular admin credits, with regular cred credentials, how far could that person get? Could a regular user get in there and do damage to your system? Uh, we try to go in there and do that too. We also try to see if we can pull data out um, and, and uh, see if it can be passed outside of their network. The whole idea is to, is to bring up uh, an idea of where do you stand as far as risk management is. Do you have any risk? Can you manage the risk that you have? Can you mitigate the risk that you have? And that's what we're trying to do with the uh, RVA part portion of it. Um, what we want to do is just, uh, we want to touch base and hit everything that we can externally, internally, and we let the different organizations within uh, CISA handle the other groups. So all of us work together sci high is part of this, everything. And everything that we do kind of gets combined and they can have an overall status of uh, how they look from, from a network point or from an internal point. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Um, as far as the number of RVAs we've done, we have completed 12 and we have two, two more to go. Uh, those are upcoming. And then fiscal year, of course, all of that resets and we, we do more. Um, but like he says, we do have limited resources. It's hard for us to get as many as we would like, but that is changing. Uh, one of the other things that we do is uh, it's that critical product evaluation. So Derek mentioned we did 12 uh, election entities already. Um, that's where we go out to these, these localities, the states, the counties, and we, uh, we assess their election infrastructure. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we're finding is that a lot of these places, um, they don't have their election infrastructure turned on, uh, and they turn it on the night of the election. So they, they will put their uh, equipment out, they will uh, uh, gather the votes, they will tabulate them, and then they will send them to wherever they need to go. And that entire infrastructure set is not turned on uh, for the rest of the year. So. Um, in that way, it's, it's secure until it's actually turned on. Uh, and then we're not sure yet how they're securing that or updating that uh, uh, infrastructure. Um, and it's pretty different between the, the, the customers that we see. Uh, we kind of talked about the CP or critical product evaluation. We've done two of those already. One of them was with a company called Unison uh, and another company called ESNS. So they brought their equipment out to our labs in Idaho uh, and we tore it apart. 
We looked at the, uh, the vulnerabilities that we could find within those pieces of equipment and then worked with those vendors to help them come up with a mitigation plan. Uh, these two vendors have publicly acknowledged that they've done this uh, and we have one more that's in the works that's being done right now, uh, uh, having their equipment uh, broken down. Um, I think that's it. Is there anything else you want to talk about? So uh, when we talk about the numbers that we're doing, um, it doesn't seem like it's a lot. Like I said, we have 64 folks uh, that are doing this work. Uh, and with our RVAs, we can only schedule out 90 of those per year with the, based on the resources that we have. Out of that 90, 30 of those are gone, go to mandated federal assessments that we do called high value assets. Uh, and then that leaves 60 discretionary uh, assessments that we can conduct yearly. Uh, and out of that 60, it's based on uh, uh, voluntary election folks that, that come seek our services. So that's all I've got for our presentation on what we're doing as far as securing uh, the election infrastructure of the country. So if there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Yes. Uh, I can't really talk about who has reached out to us. NCATS underscore info. N C A T S. A T S underscore info. At HQ dot DHS dot gov. So, yes, sir, in the cowboy hat. We do. Uh, again, I, I, we don't have very many people. We don't, we don't have a traveling road show that we go out and, and meet with these folks, but we do go to various uh, uh, different places like um, there's a CIO council that we visit and talk. We go to InfraGuard. There's um, the election ISAC that we go to and, and kind of talk about our services. There's the MS ISAC that's out there that we kind of share our services with. So the, the word gets out to the states. Uh, and what we're finding is as soon as one of them hears about it, the rest of them hear about it and, and they're, usually, they're usually knocking on our door about it. Yes, sir, at the end of the aisle there. Are you yes, we're always hiring. <laughs> NCATS underscore info. Yeah, uh, I don't know if everyone heard that, but, but, but what the gentleman said was that uh, he's assessed a couple of places like that, and it's hard to get them to mitigate it. I think um, when we're talking the county level, there's not a lot of dollars going around for, uh, for cybersecurity, um, and it's really tough to, to show them what's wrong and then them not be able to fix it based on the resources that they have. Um, and it's not just uh, election infrastructure that we find that way at the county level. It, we find that in many different uh, sectors. So, yeah. I, I'm not sure how to get them to, to fix that. It's going to have to... Yeah, not, not, inside, of, uh, not inside of NCATS, and, and I'm not sure if that's something that CIS is going to want to do in the future. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of a hard thing to do. Uh, yeah, sorry. On the aisle there. Yes, you. With the candidates, you're saying you're asking. Uh, no, so uh, we haven't had any of the candidates reach out to us yet. Uh, if they did, it, I'm not sure how we would handle that. We would probably uh, treat them like any other customer. They would have to sign up for uh, the services, and then we would provide them. I know that we, uh, uh, Nick Arroyo back there in the green shirt, wave your hand, Nick. Uh, he's going to be handling our RVA services for the RNC and the DNC. Um, currently, I believe there's, there's quite a number of candidates, uh, so they're not on the radar right now. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir.
front stop integration with Lambda. Um, one of the things I noticed was you do a lot of HTTPS scanning, and election websites are pretty miserable about that in the country. There's been some public reporting on that, but it's also just pretty easy to see. Um, have, you, have you done any work to try to take some of the work you've done on your website connections and point that election infrastructure? So we haven't yet. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons why is that we have a way to very easily collect .gov domains, um, and some states use .gov domains as well. So those we can those we can um, more easily collect. But um, in order to get the elections-based ones, we're going to need to reach out to get the specific domains to be scanned. Um, we are looking at doing that in the near future but we don't really have an ETA on that. Um, essentially what we'd probably do is create a private GitHub repo that we'd be able to pull from, like where we'd put our, the domains to scan. Um, because we don't want people knowing who our customers are necessarily, because then that could make them a target, I think. Yeah, so, so our services are voluntary, so one of the things that we give back to the community for them to volunteer for our services is anonymity, so uh, we give them the privacy. We don't want to put out, I'm, right now we don't want to put out who's coming to us along with whether or not they have issues. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so phishing is the number one issue that we run into. Phishing susceptibility and phishing weakness is what we call it. So the people first and then the, the infrastructure, security infrastructure for uh, to handle phishing payloads and, and links. Uh, and then uh, patching would be the third biggest issue that we're finding. Um, again, these are small counties in a lot of places and they don't really have the, the IT staff to, to handle some of this work. Uh, and sometimes, just like anywhere, it's not a top priority. Depends on where. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yes. Yes. That's correct. Yep. Derek, did you want to add something? Um, yeah, another thing that we've noticed as far as uh, weaknesses, um, admin passwords. Um, ad admin passwords. Too many credentials as a baseline. We've seen a lot of uh, admin passwords that are just elevated for no reason. A lot of, I'm sorry, user accounts with elevated passwords. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, there's a handful. Uh, we find that even in some of the small places, the folks that are really passionate about their job, they, they may not be getting paid very well, but they're passionate about what they're doing, so they're, they're taking the best steps they can. So there are some good places out there, yes. They're not all, it's not all dire. That's not the picture that I want to paint because it's not that bad. There's really, there's really no difference between an election system and a normal network system that we test. We find the, the exact same vulnerabilities in, in all of the networks that we test across, uh, across our customer set. Um, it, they're so standardized that, that our findings have become uh, standardized and we have a, re a repository of findings with CAN language and every time we find a vulnerability we're usually pulling it from that, from that database. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Uh, not our group. Um, I can give you one example. Uh, recently we were at a, a, an elections uh, location and we found uh, evidence of ransomware. When we find that, when we find that, thank you, when we find that type of stuff or uh, evidence of, of, of a previous breach, uh, we will contact the customer, let them know, and then we, CISA also has a threat hunting group um, who will come in, we call them right of boom, so if after something happens, uh, they can go assist the customer in, in cleaning that up or finding out what happened and, and rolling it, walking it back to, to what the issue was. But NCATS doesn't do that. We're, we're, like I said, we're left of boom. We're left of something happening. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you very much.